Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on lipids. So lipids are used for long-term energy storage, and they are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And if you think about that, that makes sense, because um, our normal energy storage molecules, carbohydrates, are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So our long-term storage, um, if I have too many carbs present, I'm going to go ahead and store them as lipids, um, and that would be made of the same chemicals, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So lipids are not polymers. So they do not form a polymer like the rest of the macromolecules that we're talking about. Um, they are nonpolar, and this is super, super important. This is actually the most important defining characteristic of lipids is that they are nonpolar. They are hydrophobic. They don't like water. Think about it. Um, Lipids are fats, right? And if you take oil or fat and you put it in water, it's going to form that blob. It's, it's hydrophobic. It's not going to mix in with the water. It doesn't mix with water. So there's three main categories of lipids. We have fats, um, and fats are composed of a glycerol and three fatty acids. And those fatty acids can be saturated or unsaturated. So a glycerol is um, an alcohol. It's a three-carbon alcohol. And so that's my glycerol. And I'm going to go ahead and draw some fatty acids that are bound to it. Now, I make my um, fatty acids bind to my glycerol through dehydration synthesis, the same way that I do with the rest of the macromolecules. But because I have fatty acids that are not forming a long chain, they're forming a branch chain like that, um, and the glycerol is not similar to the chemical composition of the fatty acid, it's not technically considered um, a polymer. So let me draw in the rest of my hydrogens and oxygens there. It's going to get a little crowded. Um, and let's go ahead and look at my, uh, my fatty acids there are saturated fatty acids. And um, these down here at the bottom are an unsaturated fatty acid. So the saturated fatty acids are completely full of hydrogen, whereas if you look at this one that's down here um, at the bottom, it's got that double bond in it, and so that's going to be an unsaturated fatty acid. And it forms a kink, and that kink becomes um, biologically important, and we'll talk about that when we, when we talk about some uh, phospholipids uh, and, and the, what that means in terms of whether or not it's a solid or a liquid at room temperature. But that's our first category is fats. And that whole molecule that I, I've got drawn there is a triglyceride. Um, so my next category is a phospholipid. And a phospholipid is composed of um, fatty acids, and they are attached to a glycerol that I'm not going to draw in here. And then instead of having three fatty acids attached to the glycerol, what you're going to have is you're going to have two fatty acids attached to the glycerol, and then on the third space you're going to have a phosphate group. Um, but we just always represent it as a ball with two legs, and one leg is always more crooked than the other leg. That's just the way I'm going to draw it. So there I've got my saturated fatty acid, and then this one that's got the kink in it, the bent leg, that's my unsaturated fatty acid. Now, phospholipids are special because I just got finished telling you that lipids, it's really super important that you know that lipids are nonpolar, except for the fact that the phosphate group on a phospholipid is actually polar, and then the rest of the molecule is nonpolar. And this gives it some special properties that we're going to talk about uh, a little later in the video as to how they actually arrange themselves because they have a polar part and a nonpolar part. So they have a part that's hydrophilic, the polar part's hydrophilic, and they have a part that is hydrophobic, the fatty acids, like normal lipids are hydrophobic. So the, the, the legs of my little guy there are still hydrophobic. And then the last class is steroids. Yes, steroids are lipids. And this is going to look completely different. So um, steroids are made of four fused carbon rings. So um, the examples are cholesterol and sex hormones. Yes, cholesterol is a steroid. No, you can't be arrested for eating too much cholesterol, although you can potentially do some long-term damage to your um, to your cardiovascular system. Sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, those are also going to be very similar chemically um, to cholesterol. So let's actually look at a generic, and this is a super generic uh, 
um, steroid. In fact, I'm not even going to draw all of the groups on the side. I'm just going to draw the overall structure. So I'm going to have four rings. Those are four carbon rings. And then to differentiate between the different types of steroids, there's different stuff that hangs off of them. Um, so depending on what's hanging off of it, it lets you know if it's a cholesterol or estrogen or estradiol or testosterone or whatever. So that's it. Um, so all three of those are, in fact, fats. And really what's in common for most of them is that they're nonpolar and they're made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So those are my lipids. And let's talk about lipids and the cell membrane. And specifically, we're going to be talking primarily about phospholipids, but we're going to squeeze in a little bit of steroids. So I'm going to have my phospholipid, and I've got the nonpolar tails. And if I put my phospholipid in water, it is unhappy because those those uh, nonpolar tails do not like being in water. So what they do is they arrange themselves like this ball is doing right here. So all of the nonpolar fatty acid tails are facing other nonpolar fatty acid tails. Now it can do this in one of two ways. It can do it by forming a bilayer, which is going to go all the way around the cell. So it would be like a two layer fatty acid tail, fatty acid tail, right? And that goes all the way around the cell. Or they can actually just form a little circle that you don't need to worry about knowing the name of. Um, so we use the bilayer method. That's our cell membrane. It's made of phospholipids. Now the phospholipids can move around. Kind of think about it like if you're walking through a club and like you kind of pass through the hallway and you can move around, but you're not going to suddenly switch from standing upright to like standing on your head. So like if there's people upstairs and there's people downstairs, they're separate. They're on separate floors still, right? But you can float around in that layer. Um, and so I've got my polar heads, that phosphate group. Remember we said it was polar. So the polar heads are going to align to the outside and the nonpolar tails to the inside. So my phospholipids form that bilayer. Um, and what they're going to do is the polar heads are going to be on the outside towards the interstitial fluid. So that's the fluid between cells or towards the inside, towards the cytoplasm, because both of those are going to be high in water. So those are both water-rich fluids, so they're going to be polar fluids. So those phosphate groups need to face the liquid, and that way the fatty acid tails are only facing each other, and that keeps those hydrophobic tails, um, those nonpolar tails, happy by, um, by facing just other nonpolar hydrophobic tails, and there's no water in there, okay? Now... I said that we were going to touch on steroids. So let's talk about cholesterol, which is the steroid that we will associate with the cell membrane. Cholesterol is located in your cell membranes. So I'm going to draw my little phospholipid bilayer zoomed in. And my polar heads are red and my fatty acid tails are yellow. And you'll notice that I'm drawing some cholesterol molecules in there. Now cholesterol, you'll notice there's a little round bit that's holding it anchored in position. That's a little polar part that holds it in that location. And then that fused ring wedges in between the fatty acid tails. Now that fused ring does two things. One, when it's hot, right, and molecules are moving around more because of kinetic molecular theory, those cholesterol molecules help maintain the rigidity of the cell membrane. They help keep the cell membrane um, more rigid because what they do is they prevent they prevent those phospholipids from like floating past each other. They basically just act as little barriers to keep everything kind of in place, right? Um, so I've got my phospholipid and I've got my cholesterol. And so those cholesterols are going to keep everything from getting too loosey-goosey and floating around and becoming too loose, right? But the other thing that they do is what happens is when it gets really cold and the molecules um, stop moving as much, what happens is those fatty acid tails, instead of waving like this, line up, right? And they become very compact. And if you've ever put um, soup or chili in the refrigerator and then come back the next day, you've seen what happens to the fat molecules. They solidify, right? So you get that layer of fat on the top. So your cell membrane, since it's made of phospholipids, 
when it becomes very cold, those molecules are going to stop moving, they're going to solidify, and so what you would do is you would get this solid cell membrane and it would lose elasticity. And that's not really helpful, you really want your cell membrane to have some elasticity. So those cholesterol molecules, instead of allowing those phospholipids to kind of rigidly align, it's going to go ahead and keep some play there. So it's going to maintain elasticity when it's cold, but it's going to decrease fluidity when it's too hot. So right? Weird. So it's going to reduce membrane fluidity um, at high temperatures, but it's going to actually increase membrane fluidity at low temperatures. Um, so there's a lot of tricky questions that we ask about cholesterol and membrane fluidity, and the answer is it helps you keep your membrane at the right fluidity level. If it's too hot, the cholesterol is going to make you more rigid, and if it's too cold, it's going to make you more fluid. So that's it for the cholesterol, and that's really, that's it for the lipids. So I hope that that makes sense to you. Remember, the most important thing to know about, um, about lipids is that there are three main categories, and that they're all very differently shaped, and that they're all nonpolar. Um, and we'll talk specifically about phospholipids a ton this year, but for right now, just make sure that you're aware that lipids are nonpolar and that there's three categories and they look really different, okay? That's it. If you have any questions, come on in or send me an email.